Hello, my name is Ellen Pallavi. I'm a member of Community Board 8. Today we're talking about constituent services at the offices of your elected officials. This show will be in two segments. In the second part, we will bring you the historical perspective and a special guest. It is my honor now to present to you Courtney Ferrissey from Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright's office, Jose Ramon Perez Lopez from State Senator Jose Serrano's office, and Shelby Garner from Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney's office. These folks bring you day, the day-to-day -day constituent relations that helping you with, with your local problems of living in New York City. So, Jose, could you tell us what the role of constituent liaison is? Well, it's about being a link between our elected official, official and our constituents. It is um, a way to provide assistance uh, to our constituents when they are looking for either benefits or are, have some problems dealing with legal assistance or um, sometimes they, are, they want to express their concerns about a law or about something that um, affects their daily life. And Courtney, can you tell us who comes to see you? What types of problems do they bring with them? Um, well, Assemblymember Seawright's district is composed largely of senior citizens and young families, and every day we receive feedback and questions about legislation, but also um, most of their questions are centered on quality of life concerns as well as municipal delivery of services. Great. Do you, do you all deal with, uh, with uh, the similar problems? I think that, uh, uh, yes, all our offices do deal with similar problems and all of our offices do work on some of the same problems together. I think the east side is pretty remarkable how closely the elected officials on the city, the state, and the federal level really work together as a unified team. But obviously there are some areas in which a federal office or a city office or a state office is going to be the best resource for the constituent. Uh, when it comes to getting answers from agencies, it's generally going to be the case that to get an answer from a city agency, it's best to go to the city council person. To get an answer from a federal agency, it's best to go to the federal uh, elected official's office. And same for the state side. Um, that has as much to do with um, uh, the fact that uh, in different ways our bosses do uh, make decisions about agency budgets. Um, and, and from that do have direct oversight abilities over those uh, different, you know, uh, executive agencies, whether it be on the city, state, or uh, local, or federal level, rather. Um, and as a result, I think uh, uh, it is often best to go to the uh, elected official's office who does directly oversee that agency and the budgets of those agencies as well. One might call that clout. Yes. <laughs> So how would somebody who just has a problem figure out what would be the right place for them to go? Can, you know, like, would they just call I, anybody? I think or? that uh, it, sometimes it's easy to determine because sometimes it's, it's a specific agency. So Social Security Administration, for example, that's a federal program, so the federal elected official. That being said, I don't think, I mean, I think all of our offices are pretty open to talking with a constituent, even if it's not really technically our issue and then telling them exactly who the best resource for them to reach out to. And I know on the east side we do talk a lot about casework in an inner office kind of way and try and, and help people out. And, and sometimes these issues that constituents have have a federal piece and a state piece. Um, you know, with Medicaid, for example, is a federal program which is run by the state of New York. Um, and so that's a program in which it's very often helpful to have a state office and a federal office working together on behalf of a single constituent. So, Jose, maybe can you tell us what you do when somebody comes to your office? How do you handle them? First of all, it's very important to listen to have an ear what, what they, they want to tell us. Sometimes they, they need to formulate what they, what they really need. And from there, we can provide assistance, we can uh, orient them uh, to different uh, non-profit agencies or if needed we can contact um, associations or 
um, government agencies uh, to get what they need. For instance, uh, there are three main uh, issues in among our constituents. It's uh, housing. Um, there's also looking for benefits like food stamps or um, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and uh, sometimes the people do not know where to where to go. And one of our tasks is to indicate to orient them where to to get that help. Um, we have uh, we we collaborate uh, with uh, different government agencies. There is a uh, intergovernmental affairs reference person, and we can make the link between our constituent and them. Can you explain what the intergovernmental affairs person does? Or what is when would you call that person, and does that span? Does that span the different, uh, the federal and state, or does that do something else? Mm, we do it as, as since I, I'm working with Senator Serrano, it's at the state level, and uh, for instance, uh, there is a someone, or a constituent of ours who are applying for for NYCHA, for New York City um, Housing Authority. And they need to know, and they want to know what is their status. Sometimes they have to work years to get a, 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 an apartment. And um, part of our of our task is to see uh, what is their status, because sometimes they don't know, know what to do. Uh, or for instance, uh, uh, with HRA, you know, human resources, sometimes they, they don't get their benefits, or it's too late, or whatever. And um, through the intergovernmental affairs in that department, we're able to to sort out what's going on, and then explain to the constituent what's what's going what's going on. So, do you all have access to the intergovernmental affairs office, or is it just uh, the state level people? Uh, do you have Do you have access yes. to them too? Yes, they're um, they're a great resource, and uh, sometimes it's just to clarify policy so that we can get at the root of the issue. Mm -hmm. And at the been? federal level, every, every federal agency has a congressional liaison um, to take questions from representative and senatorial offices. Um, that's their, their sole job is just to connect us with the, who the right person to ask the question of in their uh, agency would be. So I know you don't work for... Navigate the system, no, help, help the people navigate the system, because mm -hmm. sometimes they, 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 we know that they're really in need they need help, but they do not know where to go and how to ask. I think it's often very helpful that we, uh, our offices have direct numbers where we know we can get someone on the phone. A lot of these agencies you can spend, uh, if, you're, if you're a person calling to inquire about a status of an application with them, you can spend hours on hold and, and you know, being in that loop of, of recorded messages just trying to get to an operator. And one of the advantages that our offices all have, whether it's on the local, state, or federal level, is that we have these liaisons who their job is to take our calls and to respond to them. Um, and so we can, we can ask our constituents questions for them through these resources that we have and just get answers a little more quickly. So you really help people navigate the system and get answers fast. That's great. Are you, do you find that you can help most of the people that come to you, Courtney? Um, most of the time, yes. And then there's other cases where um, the constituent is at higher risk for lack of follow through. And that's why we, we have a great team that will follow up with them and make sure that they submitted the proper paperwork and did everything that they have to do. Um, so you also have a social worker on staff that, yes. that helps you with those individual more difficult cases? Yes. Shelby, can you tell us how you make your contacts? How do you, do you have other contacts besides intergovernmental affairs or, or Well, obviously the, the intergovernmental affairs um, resources are going to be so helpful most of the time. And usually that is going to be the first resource, at least on, on my end. It's usually the first person I reach out to because they're going to be the best person to tell me who I actually need to talk to at that agency. Um, that being said, uh, going to, especially for, for local agencies, just going to meetings, um, community meetings that they, they 
the agencies host to inform the public about decisions that they might be making or, or planned work or, um, you know, with the MTA or with the uh, bridge and tunnels and things like that. Um, you can just start meeting the, the um, public affairs uh, people at the agency who go to those meetings, and they are often a great resource to reach out to and say, you know, who am I supposed to be talking to about this in your office? And they can always get you a, a name to reach out to, a name and a number to reach out to. But the, the intergovernmental uh, people, liaisons, are, are very, very helpful. And sometimes they even bring their presentations to us. I don't to present their policy, policies. Oh, tell, tell me about that. What do they do? Um, do, you, do you all get together and listen to these intergovernmental affairs presentations, or do they come one-on-one -on -one and bring lunch and, you know, and tell you about it? Well, for example, last Friday, um, the, the borough president's office hosted a, um, a meeting about um, utility rights, because many of our constituents have to deal with bills and electricity affairs, you know, things like that. And sometimes they don't know how to handle that situation, and they do not know their rights. So um, the, 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 the office of the borough president of Manhattan organized a, a training and we were invited, people from different uh, elected officials who deal with community affairs, to listen and to learn more about how can we help um, our constituents in their rights. So you're constantly getting a lot of training. Different and a lot of information as well. And also, uh, for instance, uh, sometimes uh, an elected official or even Senator Serrano um, organizes a, a fair for a certain uh, part of our constituency. For instance, uh, a, a couple of months ago, we participated in a, um, in a fair to help the Garifuna community in Mount Haven in, in, in the Bronx. Um, people fleeing from, from Honduras, and uh, they are trying to, to seek help. You know? So uh, we were invited to, to that fair to help uh, those people who were in need how to, to get help. One question that I've been wondering about, when, years ago, we used, people used to um, keep a lot of lists and, you know, and make a lot of phone calls. And now I know everyone uses computers and online databases, et cetera, resources. How much is um, our personal contacts and phone calls important in what you do versus online emails and, and text messages, et cetera? I think it's very important that people feel listened. I mean, people bring their problems. Maybe we do not have the answer for their problems right away, but it is a lot for them. It means a lot of, for them to be listened, that someone from an elected official office, take time just to be with them and to listen and to, and sometimes the solution comes as they, they speak. Sometimes they need to, to verbalize what is, what, I, what is going on in their life to identify what is the problem and, and maybe what is the solution. So you were the people that put the personal touch on, uh, on local issues for, for people that call you, call up. Is, can, is, did I frame that right? Well, for the most part, when our bosses are away, either in Albany or in Washington, um, you know, we're the ones going to the meetings and representing them in, in, the, in the community, so okay. I think so. So are there issues that come up time and time again that that can only be solved with legislation? You know, are there intractable problems that you try to, you try to, you know, you, you just can't help somebody with? I used to work a lot on immigration cases, um, and uh, 
I don't any, I don't work on them as much in the office anymore, but that used to be kind of my focus, and we used to have a lot of constituents who would reach out to our office and, and ask for help uh, trying to get an immigrant visa for their foreign national spouses. And because of the Defense of Marriage Act, when that came to same-sex marriages, we were not able to help anyone until the Supreme Court struck down that law. Um, and right now, there are, there's instances where there's similar issues coming up, not, not necessarily because of LGBT issues, but just that we need comprehensive immigration reform to pass this Congress. Um, and it hasn't yet. And, and as a result, there are oftentimes that there are constituents that our office would very much like to help that federal law says we are not allowed to. I believe that legislation is above all, um, a, the goal of legislation is to, to improve the life of the people. The goal of, of every, every legislation should be to improve the life of, of, our, of our constituent. Um, and it's a service, it is a service. Uh, when, when an elected official uh, creates legislation, it's for the, for the betterment, for the improvement of, of the life of his or her constituents. And because of that, it's so important our our task of community liaisons because they come to us and with their needs, with their hopes, with their expectations, with their concerns, for them and for the community. And you need that that uh, that information in order to legislate. Mm -hmm. So you find out what's not working, and then you you feed that information to Senator Serrano. Correct. Yes. How about you, Courtney? What do you? What do you find that's yeah. difficult? The most challenging cases usually reveal something that's wrong um, systemically. So an issue that has been coming up time and time again in our office is the issue of jury duty exemption for the elderly. Um, so the laws that exist exempts those people who can prove a disability um, with a note from their doctor. And um, that's, that places an undue burden on the elderly. and. So Assemblymember Seawright will, will likely be taking up um, that issue for the next legislative session. Because the elderly have difficulty getting out to their doctor? Is um, that right, and um, being elderly doesn't necessarily uh, qualify as a disability or a medical con condition. So. Oh. OK. So, it's, so not being able to get like not having mobility, let's say, is not considered a disability? Well, it, it, it could be. That'll be interesting. It'll be <laughs> interesting to see how, uh, how that gets framed. Um, look forward to it. So for all of you, could you throw, I, I, for our, our viewers, let's talk about some, some, like just quickly, housing. Where would somebody with housing go? Which one of you would house? Uh, would somebody with housing go, or would they go to the city rep? It's usually going to be a state issue, I think, for most of the housing programs are run on the state level. Mm -hmm. So they so go to one of the two. For example, we are, uh, many people or who are risking eviction. Um, we, one of our, our, our means is to um, providing information, for example, there is a, a, an agency called Bronx Works mm, that can help getting them a, a, a one-shot deal or provide um, means for them to stay in, in, their, in their places, in their, their, in their apartments. Right. Um, so this is one of the most common issues that at least once a week we, we are confronted. Uh, the risk of eviction, a family or a disabled person. Um, Thank you. How about transportation? Where would, we, where would we send somebody for transportation? It really <laughs> depends on what we're talking about. I mean, there's so much federal funding in our public transportation system in New York, and there's so much um, that is run either by the state in New York City or by the city. I mean, MTA is a, is a state-run entity, um, and some of the other things, New York City DOT, Department of Transportation, is a city agency. Um, I think for a lot of transportation issues, 
the best thing to do is is to kind of reach out to your local elected official, the the city council person, because if it's a pothole or something like that, if it's New York City DOT, it's going to be your your city council person. And that person will tell you who to call if it's not the it, right. And if they will tell the you right who to call. Person. But okay. I think uh, transportation issues is something that I think all of our offices do work on a fair right. amount, even constituent work, right. because it is something that all our offices do work on as a policy issue for for our shared districts. Especially with the construction of the Second Avenue subway, that's the majority of our complaints, I think. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for being here, all of you. We, I really, yeah, it's, uh, it's great that you can come. We now have a, a special guest that will bring our, the historical perspective. So stay tuned for that. And now we have a special guest that bringing us the historical perspective. This is Elspeth Ryman who worked for 30 years as constituent liaison for assembly member Peter Granis. Welcome, yes. Elspeth. So Elspeth, during that time, you, were, you, you had a big job. You were, um, you were out and about all over the place. Can you tell us what your job was as constitu constituent liaison at that time? I started in uh, 75 when the assemblyman was just elected uh, in 74 and uh, he was a newcomer so he always said we learn as we go along and it is true because it's a learning on the job and it was you never knew what will come up. We started in a basement. In a basement, later on we went to uh, to the street, a street level. So we had constituent coming um, from all walks of life, and they have is the question. So the first thing was, how I'm going to help that person, who I'm going to contact. What is very important is to keep track of the agency because we deal a lot with the agency. Agency. So if you have a good person in one agency, uh, you write down the name and it's very important always to t say thank you and appreciation. Now if you have another pro problem but in the same agency, you can always contact the first agency and then they will refer you uh, to the person that they uh, are able to help. Um, it's very useful also to have uh, the um, League of Women Voters, uh, which has the, they represent you. That booklet is updated every time. It has all the district, the line, because some people might be on one side of the street with a different uh, representative. So it's good to have that all the time. They used to have the what's called the Green Book, which lists all the representative. But sometimes it hacks until the book comes, um, comes out. But most of all, when you have a person, it's very important to listen, to listen to their problem and then to try to find out uh, where you go to go uh, to help those person. The biggest problem we always had was housing problem. And there you can never make just, uh, you have to find there are always two sides of a story. So you let the person po uh, speak out, but you don't uh, you, sometimes you call the landlord and ask, if we have a complaint, you don't give the name. Or do, so you find sometimes, uh, you know, you might have a, a real good landlord. And uh, tenants are not always the best, uh, the best, or the opposite side. You have a, uh, a landlord, we already know, had a lot of complaint. So having a phone call from the office always helps because the most the people, when the landlord knows that they know who to go to get the right straight, that can help a lot. The other issue might be with the a tenant to ask the other people in the building to go together because when you have more than one person, it's always better for the, uh, the impact of the complaint. Now you have the city agency, you have the state on the the, the state agency. Now on the state agency, you have uh, the Senate, on the assembly, uh, and there too, 
you can call both of them if you have a problem, don't solve it on one side. Or it's always important, again, to keep a log of who is most helpful, because it's the staff who does the basic work. Now, in order to get um, in the community, I used to go a lot, uh, like the 19 precinct, for instance. We go once a month representing the, uh, the assembly at the 19 precinct. Or you go to a committee you have not gone before, or you ask who is the main person. Sometimes you don't know at the beginning, but it's important to introduce yourself. You come from the uh, the assembly men's office because that helps both the constituent general and the agency or the, the community to whom you are speaking to. And that's the community affair. Now, uh, um, I hear that you speak the correspondence between um, one agency to another. The same, it's important to get co uh, contact with the different staff in the different agency. I still do that today when try to explain how important it is to know um, the political uh, side, because a lot of uh, constituents do not understand how the government works. Great. Well, thank you very much. This is this has been very helpful. Do you do you um, do you see yes or no? We don't have, we're running out of time. Do you see that situations have changed? That, that people, the situations you dealt with have gotten better. In some way, you know, you have a more open society in general. You have a lot of enthusiasm with some council people, and you have, which is very good. And that is uh, for the future. But you also need to make progress between generation gap uh, to get the young people with the, uh, the senior citizen, because that's the future. Every young people will be a senior citizen, and to make them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for, for being here. And thank you for viewing it.